and welcome to the Donahue Group. We're delighted that you can join us for another half hour of fun-filled, insightful, intelligent conversation about issues of the day. Joining me today, Ken Risto, who's fun, always good. Fun, <laughs> Those are three. So here's the fun person, Ken Risto. Tom Paneski, I forgot what you were, but you are currently insightful. Professor, insightful, insightful professor of mathematics at UW-Sheboygan. Highly intelligent Cal Potter, <laughs> former state senator. I'm a lawyer in town. My name is Mary Lynn Donahue, and we're here today to talk about some local issues um, of most interest, I think, and relatively recent uh, in the past are the uh, primary election results. Overall results statewide, turnout for statewide for the primary. Any guesses? If you I know the actual cool. answer, don't, don't tell know. me. No, I don't know. I don't know. 18. Percent. 18. I would say maybe even less. Yeah, I would even say less, so. ten. You want to say ten? I'll go twenty, and I'm optimistic. Seven. Seven percent. No. Seven percent, really? according to the Wisconsin uh, oh Journal goodness. Sentinel, or the uh, and it excuse was me, a the Milwaukee Journal. Statewide race. That's why I bumped it up a little. That could be a new record low. <laughs> that could be Almost. a new Gee. one. A That's high new sad. low. In any event, before we get over involved in that. Um, the um, local results were, were quite interesting. I was, uh, as you know, I watch the votes come in for the League of Women Voters uh, every election, so I'm down at the administration building and calling the results to various TV stations and so forth, and always an interesting process. It was certainly much quieter with uh, such a low turnout. But we did have some interesting, um, first of all, good news that there were lots and lots of, of primaries. Statewide, or I'm sorry, in the Milwaukee area, about 66% of all um, positions, not only didn't have primaries, people are completely unopposed. So Sheboygan, again, uh, does not fit that bill. In the first district, um, I predicted, and I don't think we did predictions, did we? No, we didn't. No. Oh, too bad. That's, then we could have found out who was really smart and insightful and, you know, just playing fun. Um, Jim Gisha and Bruce Christensen were the clear winners in the first Aldermanic district where there was a big turnout. Um, 284 for Gisha, 249 for Christensen, and then Neil Altman, uh, Tim Lorenz, and uh, Job Jose came in last with 16 votes. Um, both, I think, pretty, uh, these of course are nonpartisan elections, but I think both Jim Gisha and Bruce Christensen would be considered conservative. That would be correct. Yeah. It's yeah, a so. conservative ward, goes usually Republican mm -hmm. in the uh, elections. And I think uh, the characterization of their campaigns in the paper, from what I read, was that those who went door to door yeah, uh, yeah. did it, and the rest of them didn't <laughs> seem to put forth the effort. And I think if you showed up at somebody's doorstep when it was about 10 degrees out, I think you probably got sympathy. <laughs> <laughs> or either that, or just a question as to your good sense. <laughs> See, you never had to run in a quote no, spring I know election. That, you know. <laughs> and, and if you're driving around, that was the only two signs you saw was Christian. Christensen and Gisha. Mm -hmm. Right. I didn't see any other signs like Lorenz or Jose or... Tim Lorenz, you'll remember, ran against Joe Leibham in his very first race mm -hmm. for the assembly back X number of years ago yeah. and uh, got beat then. Um, Neil Altman is a labor guy. Fun. I like Neil. Um, but And then, of course, Joe Jose with only 16 votes, I think. I'm wondering if his... Whom does the bell toll? Mm -hmm. Who tolls to the... Yeah. He loved to run, though. Yeah. Well, the, run. it's the old, the smile that you send out returns to you. I don't know. Um, but I, it'll be, uh, I have no predictions on, I th my sense is Gisha wins, but I'm not sure. I think it's pretty gall darn close. Any? No, any? Well, we'll wait. I'll wait till they have a little, the forums will get uh, now a little more crisp because you only you'll have just the two candidates. So. Right. And I think there'll be some differences between the two. Mm -hmm. And then people will decide, I think, yeah. on the differences. Any other? Do you have any sense of what kind of differences they'd have? Uh, I heard one that Christian uh, Bruce said uh, that the ambulance belongs in the uh, fire department. Oh, okay. And I, I don't know that Gisha believes that. I'm not sure. But if, if he mm -hmm. does, I don't know who I'm going to vote for then. <laughs> <laughs> it seemed in the, in the first forum, and, and I want to be sure, when I was listening and watching on, the, on television, that Jim was a little more open to looking at the reserve monies and possibly using some, whereas Bruce was pretty much saying, we have people that we hire to give us expert advice, and those experts are saying we should probably be real, real careful about going in there. And So I sense there was maybe a, a, some difference there, but other than that, I, of course, when you got five candidates and you got, you know, the 
stream of people coming in with you know some of them yeah. asking questions and some of them giving speeches with maybe a question <laughs> tacked at the end. Yeah. It was kind of hard to tell. But you're right, I think the forums now with only two of them. With the two, be, they'll be a little more crisp and yeah, define, uh, define what they think a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. And hang on to the vehicle maintenance fund because I think that is a very interesting issue and it's an issue the county has as well with no easy answers as far as I can see, but uh, we'll, we'll get to that hopefully. Um, I'm just going to put in for Gisha. We'll see. I, I'm thinking Jim too, although I, I know Bruce and I've worked with Bruce for years at South High School. He's every, a lot of people know him because mm -hmm. you know, thousands of students have streamed through South and know him. And, Gisha of is the two is the Republican activist, having yeah. been, I think, an yeah. official in the sure. Republican, Republican Party, Party yeah. and that's a Republican ward. But like you said, you know, Christensen's very well known in the community. Yeah, I think Jim is a little more um, used to the public forums and speaking. I mean, uh, Bruce Bruce really represents, represents his positions fine, but Jim is pretty pretty slick. I mean, he's pretty pretty comfortable on his feet. And if you're watching on TV, I think he's going to come across being, for lack of a better word, a little more eloquent. And that might make a little bit of a difference. I don't know. But we'll see. There's one other thing, and but just working through the list, and I don't know. I do know these guys did a lot of doors. Yep. Um, yeah. You'll remember Anthony Bonet ran for alder person in the first, first uh, yeah. district two elections ago, I think. I can't remember, but my brother lives in the first district, and he said, you know, Anthony Bonet has been to our door, to my door, three times. And he said, it was great talking to him the first time. <laughs> you know, I really enjoyed, you know, the conversation. The second time, we didn't have that much to talk about. The third time, I didn't want to see him anymore. So I think. Is there, you know, there's a point of no return where you just can't knock on the door one more time? Mm -hmm. uh, well, when know. there's only a 7% turnout, you know, that's why they end up coming so many times. There aren't too many voters to knock on the door. door yeah. 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 yeah, it takes a while, even yeah. though you're walking, yeah. it takes yeah. a while. But I do think the turnout general. in Sheboygan was higher than 7%. Mm -hmm. That was statewide. But um, the third Aldermanic district, again, a very interesting race. Danver Hasselt, Dimple Adams, and Scott Lewandowski. Dan Verhasselt, Verhasselt is the uh, incumbent, but appointed, yeah, if I'm correct. not mistaken. Correct. And so this is his first race. Right. Uh, Dimple Adams, of course, a great supporter of Sheridan Park, is a good location for the police station. Good, you know, strong supporter of the police uh, department, I think. And then Scott Lewandowski, um, formerly a, a big supporter of Mayor Perez, but actively involved in the recall, from what I understand. Was Dimple involved in the... In the recall effort as well, or, sure. or not? Sure, she was the, I thought she, I thought she was she was the one treasurer, of the, or was yeah. she the president okay. of the That's group? That's what I thought. Yeah. yeah, I know Barbara Tashinsky was one of the main spokespeople, but mm -hmm. um, I thought Dimple Adams was a... Yep, I thought so too, but I just yeah. wanted to make sure my memory was serving me correctly. So, um, I, it's close For the longest though. time, I didn't know who Dimple Adams was. <laughs> I said, you know, I was... Well, all you got to do is listen to WHBL because well, she I virtually was an open mic co-host for a while. <laughs> yeah, but I missed all of that. So when I yeah. saw the sign Dimple Adams, I'm thinking, who is that? Yeah. That's and a cute I, name. That's yeah. a cute name. She, it's hard sometimes to run with a cute name, she but she did very south. well. She came from the south, uh, came to Sheboygan in the 1970s, I think. Mm -hmm. Well, mind you, though, the, the difference here was, was small. 237 mm -hmm. votes for Verhassel, 218 mm -hmm. for Adams. That's... Pretty, pretty yeah. small. Yeah. And then Scott Lewandowski was a distant uh, uh, with 80 votes. Scott, of course, has some life because he's running for the school board. Not with those numbers, he's not. Um, oh. Sorry. I don't know. Well, we can talk about not that. Not with those but. numbers, he's not. If you can, can, I'm sorry. I mean, I'll be the, I'll be the contrarian voice here today, but if you can get only 80 in, in, a, in an aldermanic, when you go to a citywide race for school board, you're done. <laughs> Depends on who the opposition is. But uh, in any event, um, it will be interesting because we have the ver first Hmong person actually running for election. I'm sorry, my Shua Vang did run mm. uh, last year and won a, a one-year term, so she right. came in fourth, but uh, she was elected. Uh, Fong Lee is running against uh, Scott Lewandowski, and an um, um, uh, interesting fellow. I have had the chance to meet him quite yeah. bright, and of course, we all know Well, we Scott. had a chance to talk about that yeah. as we get closer. Right. Yes. Move along. Come on. All <laughs> right. You're just excited because the fourth Aldermanic <laughs> district is fairly dramatic. Joe Heidemann uh, really, um, as we say in my firm, really schvetzing uh, Jim Groff, 243 to 141, and Dan Berg had 29 votes. Um, yeah, that's interesting, I, yeah. I, I think Jim Groff has, he's just been in the paper too much for the wrong things. I don't know. 
That we'll see. Well, again, it's hard to tell. Um, it, I, if, I were, if I were Jim, I'd be very, very nervous because you're the incumbent and you lose in the primary. I mean, there's a lot of time to get your people out there to vote yet. But I know that Joe was really working doors again. I don't know how much Jim was, but I know Joe was at our door. I wasn't home, but he He's spoke back. to my wife. Uh, and I don't believe, unless again Jim was knocking, we weren't there. I'm not sure how energetic Jim is working the working uh, his his district. And um, didn't Joe run last time? Mm -hmm. uh, yes, he did. Mm -hmm. No, that wasn't against Groff. That was against. Uh, yeah. right. That was Berg. That was against Berg. Berg. When Berg was, was up for re-election, he didn't make the cut on the primary. He didn't make the cut around. on the primary. Yeah. But this time Joe's got uh, some signs out. Um, and they're all pretty strategically placed in high traffic areas, Lakeshore Drive on the south side of town. Lakeshore Drive, it's 12th Street, 8th Street, you know, and he's got, he's got, uh, he looks like he's putting a much more serious effort this time around. So. Well, you, there's nothing like running one bad race to yeah. learn all the mistakes that you've made and then figure out how you, how you change and, mm -hmm. and... And I didn't get a chance to get to the forum, but I saw it on TV again, um, and I think Joel did very well in that setting. Um, it was, I wouldn't say a hostile audience for, for Jim Graff, but uh, there were a good, there were a couple of uh, police officers in the crowd asking pointed oh, questions. Okay. Uh, one had to make, which I thought was a low blow, and I thought it was pretty shabby, but one made a uh, comment about a secret John Doe investigation. And, uh, yeah. and, and I, think Jim, I think Jim is one of these persons who understands that city issues are a little complex, and sometimes it's tough to explain that to an audience. Mm -hmm. And there was just a lot of vague um, accusations, and then the question came at the end. So it wasn't a very friendly, mm -hmm. uh, a really very friendly forum. Uh, I don't know how many of those people who were actually at the forum were actually people who vote in that aldermanic district. Mm -hmm. you, yeah. It seems like you have the same cast of, of they go to people, all of yeah, them. the same carnival, you know, kind of moving around. <laughs> That's um, a good choice of words. The, um... Well, I mean, you, know, it's, you watched, I watched a lot of them, and you're hearing pretty much the same, the right. same sort of harangues. And then at the end, it's the moderator has to say, is there a question in there somewhere? Or the candidates look at each other, and they don't even know what to say. Right. Well, there you go. So. Um, <laughs> moving right along before we completely fall through the ice, um, the six dollar manic district. Um, Bill Wangeman. Wasn't that fun? <laughs> it was great fun. Okay. I want to thank you. I'd like to ask the insightful and intelligent people on the panel here, um, as opposed to the fun person. <laughs> it's all yours, guys. <laughs> okay. Let me know when you want me to talk again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy to do that. Okay. Oh, Bill uh, Wangeman handily uh, beat uh, Jeff Radke. Um, I, I do think I predicted that. Bill, of course, is a very well-known yes. name in, yeah. In, yeah. in town, and, and Radke um, has only, this is his second race. He, he won the first time, and um, who did he beat? I am trying to remember. I don't know. But Wangeman in ran any event, before and won. So yeah. he's actually, and then he stepped down and he decided not to run again. So, yeah. I mean, he already has won And he was in the once. police department, so he knows people. He yeah. has an article in the paper every week, practically. Yep. So sure, yeah. he's and that very helps. Well known. Very yeah. well known. Yeah. Yeah. So it makes it and he's the city historian, right? Yeah. right. yeah. So yeah. I think, uh, so I think Jeff probably has his work cut out for him. Sure. Um, There's no advantage to incumbency there. No, no, I don't think so. I don't think so. And I think the last two years on the city council have frankly been fairly rough. And that I think people who have participated in that council, rightly or wrongly, may be viewed as part of a pretty dysfunctional group. And uh, so I think that, that that is potentially kind of a tough spot. Um, the um, Plymouth School Board, um, not of great interest to our listeners, but we just have to say that finally the Oostburg School District referendum of $9.85 million won. And not by a huge vote. It was 1,282 to 1,055. That's but a since, lot of votes. Though, it is. Yeah. That is a lot of votes. And it's since they the um, only lost by six votes the last time, I thought that was, I thought that was pretty interesting. Really. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, Brian did a good job in getting the community behind this vote. This Brian a successful, the, right, who used to be in the Sheboygan system, was he not? Right, yes. Um, you know, the Sheboygan example of getting the community behind a major expenditure of money helps it get through, and that's what they did. They got church groups and others involved, and that was very positive for them, sure. for him. 
Well, you think of the brilliant job the school district did with its last enormous referendum, which passed right. overwhelmingly. Yes. And that was really very much, a, uh, I think, a community effort. And uh, to sell $32 million, $36 million in a, in a referendum was, um, was uh, uh, pretty impressive. Yeah. So good for Oostburg, and I'm glad that that worked out for them. Um, we're just going to touch base on the town of Wilson um, simply because they've had the, their controversies with the um, fire department. And volunteer fire departments can often be an interesting source of, of politics, but the um, incumbent uh, chair, uh, Keith uh, Sachel, came in second to Roger G. Miller, um, who um, was uh, pretty much the decisive winner, and Brian Hoffman, who had previously been on the, the town board, is out. Uh, and then the two incumbent supervisors both, um, uh, per, you know. Are they running for two positions or just one? Uh, there's the town chair, which is one position, and then there are two. So um, when the people were voting, two were supervisors. Voting for two, and there were, that was, so there was a prime. Right. There were four people, five people running for four spots. Oh, okay. Five people running for two spots. Two spots. And so uh, the two incumbents were the top vote getters, and then there are two other uh, okay. folks. Um, who will run against the two uh, supervisors? But then I, the the town chair is the, there was just the, the one spot there, so it'll be Miller versus Sachel. So that'll be interesting to see. So overall, I think it was a, an interesting primary, and um, I will say we'll get into this in our state episode a little uh, uh, in a different episode. But um, Annette Ziegler won um, handily, yeah. handily, handily in Sheboygan County. She got 68 percent of the vote in Sheboygan County, and Joe Summers was just a few votes behind Linda Clifford. And Summer, of course, is the candidate, a lawyer from Madison, who um, at least is currently under investigation by the uh, Supreme Court for alleged unethical conduct. So not a good night for Linda Clifford in Sheboygan County, I'll, I'll tell you well, that. Well, statewide, Ziegler did very well. Yeah, yeah. more than 50% yeah. statewide, yeah. 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 but a small turnout again. Yeah, but and there were a lot. Of, there were major independent expenditures in that race, which is a, a, a new, new on scene, I think, for the court system. I mean, it used to be that uh, the courts were the last vestige of using public financing. Yeah, not anymore. You know, not anymore. Now we'll get we'll get into that. I'd, okay. I'd make a pitch for public financing. Just um, as an aside, yes. before, uh, when I went to vote, they, I had a choice between the ah. ballot or the edge. The screen. Mm -hmm. I chose to do the ballot, but did anybody uh, choose to do? The I screen? reject the screen. Off. I, just, <laughs> I don't trust them. <laughs> you don't trust them. <laughs> I did the. I did the usual ballot. The ballot too. Yeah. 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 I scanner. want a paper trail. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think there is a paper trail on our, machine? on our machines. That's a good question. I'll find out the answer to that and let you know next time. On the touch time. screens. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of curious how I many people so. actually use the touchscreen. Okay. Well, um, I did poll watching in the 2006, November 2006 election, and um, there were a number of people who tried it. It's a little, if you're in a hurry, I mean, I was in a rush moving in and out because I almost forgot to vote. <laughs> and uh, so I'm rushing in to vote, and um, the screen takes more time in, in my experience, just having watched okay. people go through it and so forth. Um, but I, I think it's... I think it's interesting, but I will check to see if there is a paper. Most states they aren't, and they're, and they're having major revamping of the voting machines in many states because there's no paper trail. Right, exactly, yeah. exactly. You need the paper trail. There's how can you do a recount without a paper trail? I mean, it takes away the the whole concept of a recount. I sure. think so. So, but it's called, the machine is called the edge. The edge. Yes, okay. that's what the... the living on the edge, living yes. Living on the edge. <laughs> well, it's fun if you're in the administration building and you watch people, all the clerks bringing in ballots from all over the county, and I enjoy doing that, and, uh, mm -hmm. and you just hear what, what's going on. So that's right, what you were seeing, on. they were bringing a printout from the... No, no, I mean, everything was in boxes. Okay. Um, but, I, and, but I did not ask if there's a paper trail. Okay. I had just assumed there was, but... Well, I think it's, a, it's just a computer. All you have to do is press a button and probably print well, it, it out, but paper, I guess yeah. you always have to have faith in if the magnetic disk goes from the, you know, the information from the disk to the paper correctly or not. I still miss the little levers. Sure. When you used to pull the... You'd pull well, the big pull handle the and closed. the curtain would close, and <laughs> yep. I would... Yeah. And then you didn't have to... Well, in any event. Um, so we're, uh, we're going on to the general election, but um, just some interesting, um, um, interesting other issues. A uh, big source of controversy, and Tom, I'd be interested in your perspective as a former alder person about the vehicle fund, which has been 
discovered, $8 million, um, used for purchase of police and other maintenance. city cars, yeah, or, maintenance. Was it, I'm not sure what it's used. It's used for replacement, and now is it just public works vehicles, or is it uh, police department vehicles? I, I'd have to check it out. I, don't, I thought I it was don't just know. police department, but that doesn't make any sense. No, it's yeah. more than just it's police Because yeah. they're big trucks in the public uh, yeah. Public Works Department, and those wear out, and they need they need replacement. And they're, they're not cheap. And they're not cheap. Motors. They're oh. not cheap. So uh, I thought, what would I do if I? Generally, I don't like raid funds. When I was on the council, they're there for a purpose. Uh, the uh, industrial park fund was there for a purpose. You know, this would be there for a purpose, but. Maybe there's better equipment nowadays, and uh, the fun is a little too uh, too high. So you'd have to really, before you made up your mind whether to take any, uh, maybe look at the records, see how much over the last four or five years the vehicle fund was used. Well, it seems to me that is something that the finance department could make a, a logical explanation of. You know, what's needed, what should be there, what shouldn't be there, and. Um, you know, sometimes you just say, okay, every year we're going to put this much in the fund, and maybe you don't monitor that very well, right. and it just grows and grows and grows, and then you say, oh, I didn't have to put that much in the fund. Yeah. I could have Eight million by seems with less. high, but yeah. I don't know. I'm, it, yeah. it, it would really depend. And of course, the county has always had a substantial surplus. Most and, organizations, and, you know, just like they tell you, you should save up enough money so that you can live if you lose your job. Um, you know, See, governments and nonprofits typically you like to have them save some money for, for the the rainy day fund. And um, I know the county has done that. But Pat Whedon, um, long time county board supervisor, really was a strong pusher to get that, the the county surplus spent out, which was considerably more. Mm -hmm. And um, of course, well, we don't know what all the city surplus funds are. Yeah, and I'm sure the fund was around when they had the incinerator and all the vehicles that worked in the incinerator. You had mm -hmm. to replace those. Now, they may have cut back on the fund at that point. May not have. It may have just so. Uh, what do you think of Mike Warner's idea to, if there is this big fund, to um, use part of that for the police station but then borrow more money and actually spend more on the police station? <laughs> Well, you, well, the you, police aren't happy with their garage right, situation, yeah. and, and I don't know whether you know this is a uh, something that ought to be addressed. Now is the time to do it. Mm -hmm. If that garage and maintenance issue is is so dysfunctional, you ought to address it. Well, it it sounds typical politics, though. You find money, spend it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, if they found the, money, spend it. Why spend it? But the characterization yeah. <laughs> in the paper was that how much time officers are spending, you know, taking cars to maintenance and then coming back with them. And I mean, when you're paying an officer to be an officer, you don't want them driving around with a car trying to find where they're going to have it fixed. You know, if there's a legitimate time wasting here, somebody ought to look at that. Well, then you got that goes down to you know there was a police maintenance group and then there was the public works maintenance group, and so should a city just have one maintenance? Uh, so area, so in well, consolidation sense, of services. Who knows? Who knows? Yeah, because the police maintenance one was right next to City Hall, that right. building. Yeah. Well, and they, it, what, what it was characterized in the paper is that you simply move the folks that fix police cars down to the city municipal garage, and they're sort of being put in a corner over there to work, and there's really no pooling. No of, pooling. Of, I, 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 didn't, I didn't get that from the. Oh, I don't know, that, but okay, I, I didn't yeah. get that from the article in the paper. There was criticism that there wasn't enough uh, okay. savings to, to warrant that move. I don't know. <clears throat> See, that's okay. going to be the hard thing. Is trying to figure out is this just one of those things where it's inconvenient, and we'd really. I mean, I would like to have a nice, a nicer faculty lounge at South High School, and I'd like it carpeted, and I'd like some new furniture. You know, and I, there's lots of things I would like, but I know that I, if I have to put up with it, I'll put up with it. Or if it's as Cal suggested something, yeah. you know, that where it really is in the long run, you're, a, you know, you've saved a penny, but it's going to cost you, you know, a pound. Um, and it's really hard to sort that all out because uh, I haven't seen a really, you know, what I would consider a, a informative discussion on that issue yet. Well, the police aren't really happy with the garage that's going to be built, built at the yeah. at the police yeah. station either. Mm -hmm. Maybe those two can be lumped together and say, let's do this right. Yeah. 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 Interesting. It's, um, it's 
such an intense situation, though, sometimes it's it's going to be hard to, to kind of separate the politics it's out, uh, yeah, yeah. Tom, like I think you said. But, but I would sense with Renee Susha going off the council that if it comes out that there's a reasonable case to be made to spend more money to do it right this time around, even if it means dipping into some of that money and borrowing perhaps a little bit, I think there's going to be, I think the, I think the council will go along with that. Depends on how many of those officers, how many officers <laughs> people are running get elected. <laughs> well, we, yeah, the, last the, episode, get elected. the last episode, we were assured that none of these guys have a common agenda. Okay, uh, so uh, I'm hearing from my <laughs> from the informed side of the room, <laughs> as opposed to the cynical side of the room. Yeah, the yeah. that perhaps this may not be the case. Well, let's let's Rather just pro police. Let's put it so, that way. Let's continue oh, sure. on. And that's Good. The way it should be. Good news is uh, 9.3 uh, uh, percent increase in um, mm -hmm. tourism tax dollars. Um, a correlation being made between the city taking tourism in house and the additional tax money. I did not read the article, so I'm not up on it, but... Um, uh, it went, some, went from something like 340000 to 415 or something. I don't, rem I don't have the okay. exact numbers, and that was a 9% increase. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what was going on. Uh, this was 206 over 205. So it's a two-year period of time? Uh, 205, they measured, so it was the increase over 205. Oh, I see. So it was the money that was brought in in 2006, 2006. Yeah, it was the money brought okay. in in 2006, right. which would have been the, the year that the Tourism yeah. Bureau was in place. Yeah, and pretty much in full swing. So yeah. mm -hmm. I, I think that's interesting. But, I think, um, you know, I, I'm on an email list, so I'm getting emails about interesting things happening around the city and so forth from the Tourism Department. But it seems to be a pretty lively group. And that the materials they're putting out are good. The art but, festival but, down at Blue Harbor was fun. But Sheboygan um, is, yeah, is becoming a destination, so more people will come because you know, with mm -hmm. the golfing and the uh, uh, Road America and just the other events, it's nationally becoming a destination. And so maybe the tourism bureau helps it, but I don't know that it would be. Uh, I wouldn't give it the full credit. <laughs> no causation, just correlation. Correlation, yeah. <laughs> um, we will note that it looks like the uh, uh, county board is going to be, um, it is coming up for a vote, um, going to be selling Sunny Ridge, kind of an end of an era. And, um, and we only have a minute left. Um, and I just uh, want to say that we've had the passing of two local wonderful people, one Dwayne Nye, um, formerly of WHBL and uh, news director for news, many years. News yes. director for many years and a kind and gentle guy. And uh, Leo Bry, rather, uh, an icon in uh, Sheboygan labor politics and a dear, a dear fellow, uh, as I remember. And uh, so we uh, wish them well on their on their next journeys. And of course, nationally, um, my favorite columnist Molly Ivins uh, passed away. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, she was a giant of a woman in uh, more than one way. She, I met her in Milwaukee and uh, pre-chemotherapy, she was over six feet tall and had red hair that just kind of swam out and one of the funniest uh, and uh, most insightful and courageous columnists I think that uh, that I had ever Never read. Never feared a president, that's That's sure. it. <laughs> Got and all we'll three say of us in there, funny, insightful, and smart. Nice. And, and we'll be all back. Three. All, three <laughs> all, three. all three combined.